Why can't America learn from its failures and humiliations? America is not good fit for stabilization. Jeffrey Feltman recently was saying that America's interest in the Horn of Africa is stability. I'm sorry, can you repeat that again please Mr. Feltman? America please show us your CV before we can offer you the job of stabilizing Ethiopia or the Horn. Here is the truth, the most likelihood outcome wherever America's intervention is complete disaster and instability, not stability. Find out yourself below what mess your intervention did to the poor nations. The Somali battle that changed US policy in Africa. Here is what happened in the US Somalia in 1993, the source is BBC. The sight of dead US soldiers being dragged through the streets of Mogadishu was a turning point in one of the United States' most high-profile interventions in Africa. The images, broadcast around the world, outraged many. In October 1993, elite American troops launched a disastrous raid in the Somali capital Mogadishu. Their aim was to capture key allies of the powerful Somali warlord, General Mohamed Farah Idid. But U.S. forces met fierce resistance from Idid's militia. Two U.S. Black Hawk helicopters were shot down. In the ensuing battle, Hundreds of Somalis were estimated to have died. Some 18 Americans and two UN soldiers were killed. At the time, the United States was leading a UN mission to end the civil war and famine in Somalia. Within six months, the US had withdrawn its forces from Somalia. The perceived failure of the Somali mission made the US wary of intervening in African crises, says BBC. 3.30 in the afternoon, they arrived where the meeting was taking place from the air and the ground. And when they started, the ID militia started shooting. For the first helicopter was hit. It was just going down like this, like, like this. And where it landed, it is less than 700 yards from my home. While the first helicopter, which was down, they were trying to defend themselves, and uh, Americans were trying to protect that helicopter. Another helicopter was also shot. So things changed completely. They were firing everywhere. The Somali militias were firing everywhere. Every space they, they, they can see or shoot Americans, they were firing. Americans were firing back, and uh, any threat they have seen, they were shooting, including civilians, because they had to protect themselves. It lasted the next until the next morning. So almost, almost 18 hours. 18 Americans were killed and 73 Americans wounded. And I heard people saying a thousand of Somali people were the casualties. The Aidid supporters or militias, they were dragging the dead American soldier in the streets of Mogadishu. And the people that were celebrating, I mean, it's from Ididi's part, they were not from all Somalis. But America keeps the same thing throughout the globe. They are not willing to learn anything from those interventions resulted in total failure. The sovereign nations destroyed and dismantled and become stateless. American soldiers eventually pack up their bags and return with humiliation. How many failed states in the world are now because of America's damaging interventions? We will also present here the Lawrence Freeman's in-depth analysis of America's foreign policy and his recommendations for the U.S. administration to focus on promoting economic growth and tranquility rather than foreign interventionism. The article titled Promoting Economic Growth and Tranquility Should Replace Foreign Interventionism, The Case of Ethiopia, September 2, 2021. Lawrence Freeman is political economic analyst for Africa for over 30 years. Here is his analysis. The United States recently evacuated its soldiers from its 20-year-old failed invasion of Afghanistan. And yet the President Joe Biden rushing to impose more harsh penalties on the nation of Ethiopia. Is President Biden foolish enough to allow Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Samantha Power, and others in his administration to lead the U.S. into another foreign disaster after 20 years of failed interventions? This remains to be seen. 
history often provides us with a real-time juxtaposition of events that exposes an underlying reality that might otherwise go unexamined by those who are habituated to regurgitating media-induced popular opinion. For the fake medias are publicly joined the liberal establishment's campaign to weaken the government of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed in favour of separatist forces. Tony Blair defended the British-US disastrous Afghanistan policy. Remember, Blair was British Prime Minister and Labour Party leader from 1997 to 2007. In his wordy defence for geopolitical-motivated interventions, Blair castigated President Biden for pulling U.S. troops out of Afghanistan. Blair arrogantly insisted that it is the responsibility of the West to military intervene around the world in the guise of promoting so-called democratic values. He wrote on August 21, if the West wants to shape the 21st century, it will take commitment, we in the West represent values and interests worth being proud of defending. Blair attempts to justify a generation of Western intervention that has produced death, destruction and suffering around the world. Blair and George W. Bush launched the invasion into Afghanistan under the pretext of chasing down the terrorists responsible for the 9-11 bombings in the U.S. Except that the majority of those responsible were citizens of Saudi Arabia, the geopolitical ally of the U.S. in the Gulf region. Less than two years later the U.S. invaded Iraq, searching for the non-existent weapons of mass destruction. How many millions of men, women and children have lost their lives or suffered horrible conditions because of the ill-fated Western adventure to destroy Iraq, a then relatively stable nation in the region? Former President Obama's overthrow and elimination of President Mohammed Gaddafi almost ten years ago purportedly to protect the Libyan people has led to untold suffering of millions of Africans across the Sahel. This intervention transformed the nation of Libya into a failed state and has led to an expansion of violent extremist movements throughout the nations of the Sahel, still ongoing today. Obama's support for regime change against Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has done nothing but create more devastation in the Middle East. Now ask yourself, how many nations dedicated to the principles of American republicanism were nurtured into existence during this generation of U.S. and Western intervention? Will Biden end foreign interventions? President Biden's August 31st address to the people of the United States could portend the end of U.S. policy of misadventurism around the world when he said, this decision about Afghanistan is not just about Afghanistan. It's about ending an era of major military operations to remake other countries. If so, why is Biden's presidency still playing bad role of weakening democratically elected government of Ethiopia and supporting the labeled terrorist organization and are harming the Ethiopian poor? This moment provides President Biden with a unique opportunity to define a fresh foreign policy approach. Let President Biden demonstrate his commitment to this new outlook by reversing his administration's involvement in undermining the elected government of Ethiopia. The U.S. should be supporting and strengthening Prime Minister Abiy in his efforts to secure the nation-state of Ethiopia against separatist rebels trying to dismember the nation. Sanctions will not help Ethiopia. It is not in America's interest to have a weakened Ethiopia. Sanctions are not an effective method of conducting relations with a sovereign nation that has provided stability in the region and been an ally to the U.S. There is no justification for the U.S. to turn against Ethiopia, its erstwhile partner in the Horn of Africa. Sanctions should be repealed immediately. This will require President Biden curtailing his Secretary of State, Antony Blinken's proclivities for interventionism and Samantha Power a longtime supporter of responsibility to protect a 2P and George Soros, which revolving around the regime to change. A new foreign strategy should not be predicated on intruding militarily or applying political coercion to other nations under the pretext of imposing so-called Western democracy. Rather we should emulate one of our great U.S. presidents, John Quincy Adams, who said in his 1821 Fourth of July speech, America goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy. Instead of weakening nations through sanctions and the withholding funds for development, the U.S. should export republicanism. The U.S. was founded as republic with a government constitutionally mandated to provide for the general welfare of its citizens. All great U.S. presidents, 
regardless of party understood that fostering economic growth, propelled by advancements in science and technology, was the proper means to ensure prosperity and tranquility. Ethiopia, although still an emerging nation has distinguished itself by launching bold initiatives to drive economic development, particularly in the area of infrastructure. Let the basis for a renewed alliance and friendship between Ethiopia and the U.S. be grounded on policies that promote economic progress for Ethiopia's 110 million citizens. Lawrence Freeman is a political economic analyst for Africa, who has been involved in economic development policies for Africa for over 30 years. As proud Africans, it has never been more imperative we take back the narrative about our continent. As Ethiopians, the challenges we face are further compounded by bias. In unity we need to and we can overturn this. God bless Ethiopia, Prime Minister Abiy tweeted today. Finally, everything for Ethiopia and its people is calm and beautiful in contrary to the reports of the fake news. America helped the dead TPLF to rise from its tomb putting pressure under the cover-up of humanitarian aid. The terrorist TPLF gets an update information via satellite about the Ethiopian National Defense Force they know where to hide themselves in advance in most cases but our eagles, the air and the ground forces have found new ways to break this. Hopefully the US leaders didn't forget what the Ethiopian National Defense Force did on TPLF November last year after the terrorist undertook attacks. It only took three weeks to take everything under control. TPLF Junta was not only removed from Mekali but they were sent to their favorite hell. Thanks to the America's direct involvement in the war they managed to lift up this evil group and enjoy a certain degree of revival. The blood of our both people continued to shade due to what the US is doing. But the seizure of Addis Ababa is for sure the daydream. Everyone listen to this. Tourists are still coming in to visit this land of hidden treasure. We can't help you the daydreamers. It is better for you to stop your inhuman and evil practices and have a rest for the night dream. The daydream of such kind is not working as it is moving you back to hell not Ethiopia. Ethiopia and its patriots continue to win and Ethiopia prevails. If you want to go to hell that is your choice our hands are clean. You are free to choose your own destination. But Ethiopia is destined to the new highs. A number of cities including Desi and Kombolcha are nearing back to the control of the National Defense Force as we learned from legitimate sources. Thanks for your time and we hope you enjoyed our presentation and understand the current situation in Ethiopia. Please give us a like, and share this to others. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you will receive notification as soon as we upload new videos. And also feel completely free to comment without violating the community guidelines of the platform. Thanks again.